dependence of rate on concentration, rate expression, and rate constant. Let us now see how the concentration affects rate and the rate expression and rate constant. Let us burn a magnesium strip in air having less oxygen and air having more oxygen and see what happens. As you can see, higher concentration of oxygen results in faster reaction. Let us study this phenomenon theoretically. We will take a generic reaction. A plus B gives C plus D. Now, if we increase the concentration of reactants A and B, then the rate of formation of products C and D is increased, as can be seen. This is because of the increased collisions between the reactants A and B, which increases their probability of undergoing the reaction. Let us take the reaction again. Now, if we decrease the concentration of reactants A and B, as seen, the rate of formation of the products C and D decreases. This is because there are very few reactants, so their collisions will decrease, which decreases their probability of undergoing the reaction. As seen, the rate of reaction depends on the concentration of reactants for our reaction. The representation of rate of reaction in terms of concentration of the reactants is known as the rate law. It is also called as the rate equation or the rate expression. Let us apply this rate law to a general reaction. AA plus BB gives CC plus DD. Here, small letters A, B, C and D are the stoichiometric coefficients. So the rate expression will be rate equals A raised to X into B raised to Y or minus DR by DT equals K into A raised to X into B raised to Y. This form is known as the differential rate equation. Let us take a few examples to explore this equation further. We take the example of formation of NO2 and measure the rate of reaction as a function of the initial concentrations of the reactants, nitric oxide and oxygen, by keeping concentration of one reactant constant and changing the concentration of the other reactant, and also by changing both reactants' concentration. The results were obtained as shown in the table. We can see that when concentration of NO is doubled, and of O2 is kept constant, then the concentration of NO2 increases by a factor of 4. This indicates that the rate depends on square of concentration of NO. When we keep concentration of NO constant and double concentration of O2, we see that the rate now also gets doubled. So we conclude that the rate depends on first power of concentration of O2. So, from these two observations, the rate equation comes out to be rate equals K into concentration of NO square into concentration of O2. In this case, we saw that the power of the concentrations in the rate equation is equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. But is this always the case? Let us see. Let us take the example of formation of hydrogen bromide. We can see that when concentration of H2 is doubled and of Br2 is kept constant, then concentration of HBr is doubled. So we conclude here that the rate depends on first power of the concentration of H2. But when we double the concentration of Br2, keeping concentration of H2 constant, then the concentration of HBr increases by a factor of 1.5. This indicates that the rate depends on a fractional power 0 0.5 of Br2. So the rate equation will be rate equals K into concentration of H2 into concentration of Br2 raised to 0 0.5. We can see here that the power is not equal to the stoichiometric coefficient. Now let us take one more example, that of the hydrolysis of an ester. 
we can see that when concentration of methyl acetate is doubled and of water is kept constant, then concentrations of both acetic acid and methanol are doubled. So we conclude that the rate here depends on first power of concentration of methyl acetate. But when we double the concentration of water, keeping concentration of methyl acetate constant, then the concentration of both acetic acid and methanol are unchanged. This indicates that the rate does not depend on the concentration of water. So the rate equation will be rate equals K into concentration of methyl acetate into concentration of water raised to zero. Thus, we have seen that rate law is an expression in which the reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of reactants with each term raised to some power, which may or may not be the same as the stoichiometric coefficient of the reacting species in a balanced chemical equation. For any reaction cannot be predicted by merely looking at the balanced chemical equation, that is, theoretically, but it must be determined through experimentation. Similarity of a reaction. One more concept that helps us in understanding the mechanism of reactions is the molecularity of a reaction. The number of reacting species, which may be atoms, ions or molecules, taking part in an elementary reaction, which must collide simultaneously in order to bring about a chemical reaction, is called molecularity of a reaction. As seen in first equation, which shows the decomposition of phosphorus pentachloride when only one reacting species is involved, the reaction is termed as unimolecular reaction. The second equation shows dissociation of hydrogen iodide. Such reactions, which involve simultaneous collision between two species, are termed as bimolecular reaction. The third equation, showing the formation of carbon dioxide from two molecules of carbon monoxide and one molecule of oxygen, involves simultaneous collision between three reacting species. Such reactions are called as trimolecular or termolecular reactions. These reactions occurring in one step are called elementary reaction. Usually, molecularity greater than three is not observed as the probability that more than three molecules can collide simultaneously and react is very small. But then, what of reactions such as this? Four moles of hydrogen bromide reacting with a mole of oxygen to form two moles of water and two moles of bromine. The apparent molecularity here seems to be five. But is it actually so? This reaction actually occurs in the following steps. In the first step, the HBr and O2 molecules collide to form the HOOBr complex. As seen, this step is bimolecular. In the second step, HOOBr complex formed in the first step collides with HBr to form HOBr complex. This step is also bimolecular. In the third and final step, the HOBr complex and HBr collide to give water and bromine. This step is also bimolecular. We multiply the final step by 2 so as to balance the intermediate step equations, and so we get the balanced final equation. As we saw, at no point of time does the molecularity increase more than 2. Such reactions, wherein a sequence of elementary reactions gives us the final products, are called complex reactions. Let us take another complex reaction that occurs in steps. The reaction is between 2-bromo-2-methylpropane and the hydroxide ions from sodium hydroxide solution to replace the bromine atom in the organic compound with the OH group. The first step in the reaction is that the carbon-bromine bond in a small proportion of the organic compound breaks to give ions. The carbon-bromine bonds are quite strong, so this change is slow as the covalent bond reforms if these ions hit each other again. The curved arrow in the equation shows the movement of a pair of electrons. Now, if there is a high concentration of hydroxide ions present, then, the positive ion which was formed has a higher chance of hitting one of these hydroxide ions. This step will be very fast. 
A new covalent bond is made between carbon and oxygen using one of the lone pairs on the oxygen atom. The carbon-oxygen bonds are strong, so once the OH group has attached to the carbon atom, it tends to stay attached. Now, the overall rate of a reaction is controlled by the rate of the slowest step. Like in our example, the positive ion has to form first in order to combine with the hydroxide ion. And this formation of the positive ion is a slow step, so it determines the overall rate of the reaction. The slow step of a reaction is known as the rate determining step. We can understand this through a simple analogy. First, let us use all big funnels stacked one above the other. As you can see, the water flows down fast through all the funnels and into the beaker. This can be compared to a reaction with all steps occurring at same pace. Now what will happen if one of the funnels has a smaller mouth? As the funnel with smaller mouth allows water to pass through it quite slowly, it affects the overall flow of water. In spite of there being bigger funnels, it is the funnel with the smaller mouth that is determining the overall flow rate of water. This can be compared to a complex reaction in which there is a slower intermediate step. The rate of this slower step will determine the rate of the entire reaction. Hence, the slower step is called the rate determining step. We will now study about the temperature dependence of the rate of reaction. To observe the temperature dependence of the rate of reaction, let us conduct an experiment. We have a flask of oxalic acid. We will add potassium permanganate to it. We take the mixture in two flasks and heat just one of them. We can see that the solution at higher temperature loses color much faster than the solution that was not heated. The loss of color is an indication that the reaction has occurred. A general observation regarding reactions is that, for every 10 degree rise in temperature, the reaction rate doubles. This temperature dependence of the rate of reaction can be given by the Arrhenius equation. In this equation, A is the Arrhenius factor, or the frequency factor. Ea is the activation energy, and R is the gas constant. Let us take another example to have a deeper understanding. We will use the simple reaction of formation of hydrogen iodide. Hydrogen and iodine gases combine to form hydrogen iodide. Arrhenius gave a theory which said that these molecules collide to form an intermediate complex first. This intermediate complex is in existence for a very short time. It then breaks up to give us hydrogen iodide. This intermediate complex is called as the activated complex C and the energy to form the activated complex is called the activation energy Ea. This energy diagram gives a much clearer idea. Initially the hydrogen and iodine molecules do not have sufficient energy but when they get the activation energy they form the activated complex. This complex disintegrates to form the product hydrogen iodide. Some energy will be released during the process of disintegration of the intermediate complex. The amount of this energy released will depend on the energy of the initial reactants and the final product. Now, in a reacting species, all the molecules do not possess the same amount of energy. So, it is very difficult to predict the behavior of any one molecule. To overcome this difficulty, Maxwell and Boltzmann used statistics to predict the behavior of a group of molecules. They described a way to represent the distribution of kinetic energy of the molecules by plotting the fraction of the molecules, Ne by Nt, with a given energy E versus the kinetic energy. Here, Ne is number of molecules with energy E, and Nt is the total number of molecules. The peak of the curve corresponds to the maximum fraction of the molecules having the same energy. So, this gives us the most probable kinetic energy. Very few molecules have sufficient energy, activation energy, 
to undergo the complex formation. At energies more or less than the most probable value, the number of molecules having that energy decreases. This can be from the slopes on either side of the peak. When the temperature is raised by 10 degrees, the number of molecules having higher energies will increase. This is seen by the broadening of the curve towards the right. The area under the curve must be constant, since total probability must be 1 at that energy decreases. This can be from the slopes on either side of the peak. When the temperature is raised by 10 degrees, the number of molecules having higher energies will increase. This is seen by the broadening of the curve towards the right. The area under the curve must be constant, since total probability must be 1 at all times. Increasing the temperature of the substance increases the fraction of molecules, which collide with energies greater than the activation energy. From the curve, we can see that when temperature is increased by 10 degrees, that is, at T plus 10, the area showing the fraction of molecules having energy equal to or greater than the activation energy gets doubled, leading to doubling the rate of a reaction. Effective Catalyst Effective Catalyst Intro We have two atoms here, but it seems they have no intention of coming close. Let us introduce a catalyst into the mix. As you can see, the catalyst, being a bully, forces the atoms into joining together to form a compound. And being tough, the catalyst remains as it is. No change happens to it. Let us now study about the effect of a catalyst on the rate of reaction. Suppose we have two reactants, A and B. If those molecules which have sufficient energy, activation energy, collide, only then will the product be formed. This occurs at a slow rate, as few molecules possess the required activation energy. Now let us introduce a catalyst and see what happens. As seen, the catalyst forms temporary bonds with the reactants to form a temporary complex. It soon disintegrates to form the product and catalyst. A small amount of catalyst can catalyze a large amount of reactions as the catalyst is not used up and can be reused again and again. The graph shows the energy curves for the reaction without catalyst and also for the reaction with catalyst. As can be seen, the catalyst provides an alternate pathway or reaction mechanism by lowering the activation energy required to form the product. The Arrhenius equation also tells us that on lowering of activation energy, the rate of reaction will be increased. A catalyst does not alter Gibbs energy delta G of a reaction. It catalyzes the spontaneous reactions but does not catalyze non-spontaneous reactions. It is also found that a catalyst does not change the equilibrium constant of a reaction. Rather, it helps in attaining the equilibrium faster. That is, it catalyzes the forward as well as the backward reactions to the same extent so that the equilibrium state remains the same but is reached earlier.